Okay, so in last class, uh, we were discussing about the relative abundance of isotopes and uh, we studied about the chemical as well as physical properties of isotopes. Today, uh, we're going to do some past paper questions of this chapter, both MCQs and theory paper. Then we are done with this chapter, we will move on to the next topic. So, uh, some isotopes, uh, atoms of view, we, can you recall the definition of isotopes? Isotopes are the atoms of the same element with same number of protons but different number of neutrons, right? Okay, and uh, some isotopes of some elements are radioactive in nature. Actually, uh, we have to cover one small topic which is uses of isotopes. So isotopes are basically used for various purposes. We have to remember just a few uses of some isotopes of different elements. For example, if we talk about carbon-14 isotope, carbon has three isotopes, one with the mass number 12, one with the mass number 13, and one with the mass number 14. The carbon-14 isotope is used for radioactive dating. It's called use karte hai for radioactive dating. Uh, what is radioactive dating? Basically, if you have heard that uh, sometimes archaeologists, they find different monuments and different mummies do you guys know what mummies are that they found in Egypt? So when, how do they tell the age of that particular monument or particular artifact by the radioactive dating? This is also known as carbon dating. And you're going to study about that in more detail in physics. Uh, we're not going to go into the depth of carbon-14, uses of carbon-14 isotope. We just have to remember one use. It is used for radioactive dating. This is also known as carbon dating. Some isotopes of iodine. Iodine has an isotope with the mass number 127. It is used for cancer treatment. And we have one isotope of uranium. It is a very famous isotope, which is also radioactive in nature. Uranium-237, it is used to generate Electricity. Do you guys know another use for uranium-235 and uranium-238? Basically, it's uranium-238. 238 value isotope. Okay. In detail, chemistry, how are they actually used to generate electricity? You just have to remember that one particular use that radioactive isotopes are sometimes used to generate electricity. Some of the radioactive isotopes are used to fight cancer. And some are used, uh, carbon-14, uh, actually, isotope that is used for radioactive dating. But we don't remember so much, we don't Yes, uranium isotopes are also used to make an atomic bomb. But uh, try to learn this particular use that it is used to generate electricity. So the nuclear bomb or atomic bomb wali cheese and we avoid karte. Yes, all of these isotopes are radioactive in nature. Because uh, when we use radioactive isotopes, basically, uh, do, as they emit different types of radiation, the radiation can be used to generate electricity because when they emit radiation, these radiations contain energy. And by using that energy, we can make a bomb blast or we can also heat water to generate electricity. But you just have to remember that radioactive isotopes, they releases energy. If an isotope of any element is radioactive in nature, radioactive isotopes release or emit energy. Basically, radioactive uh, is uh, formed by two words. Radio means radiations. And active means that is uh, radioactive, uh, radioactive uh, that can emit radiations. Okay, active ho. Not all the isotopes are radioactive in nature. Carbon has three isotopes: carbon twelve, carbon thirteen, and carbon fourteen. Carbon twelve and carbon thirteen are not radioactive in nature. They do not emit energy. Uh, actually, uh, theoretically, you cannot identify which isotope is radioactive, but uh, we have a radioactive meter which is known as GM tube. 
if you put radioactive meter in front of the isotope, it will identify that whether that particular isotope is emitting radiations or not. Even it gives a radioactive count, which tells how radiations emit. Ho rahi and budget that uh, you will gonna study in detail in radioactivity chapter that is in physics. Here in chemistry, we don't have to learn about this. Yes, uh, obviously it is used as a nuclear fuel to generate electricity. We can also use them to uh, make an atomic bomb, but that is not a good use of a radioactive isotope. Okay, ji. Chale, uh, we are done with this chapter and now we are going to move on to the past paper questions. Okay, past paper questions are very important. Dekho, jab bhi aap koi bhi course padte ho, so uh, when you are able to do the past papers of that particular topic, it means you are well prepared for the exam. Atomic bomb is for the safety of a country. Yes, I agree, but uh, most of the people do not agree, right? Chalo. Let's move on to the questions here. So today's class is going to be really very important because we are doing the past papers. Past paper classes are very important. So you have to listen to your today's class and participate in the class. Mein, you have to tell me your answers. What are your answers? What are you thinking? And wherever you have any problem, you have to ask the question. Okay, let's move on to First, we'll try some paper one questions that is MCQs or paper two for IGCSE. Then we will move on to the theory paper. Uh, Zahra, bache, uh, these worksheets are uploaded on your portals or on your drive if you're using the drive or those of you who are using the portals. So, pe ye uploaded hai. if you need hard copy of these past papers, then you have to contact the admin for that. Tell me. Uh, question number one is very easy. I think you guys can tell me your answer. Jaldi se batao answers chat mein. A student is given only the nucleon number of an atom. So what is the nucleon number? Nucleon number is the sum of protons and neutrons. Right? What can be deduced about the structure of the atom? It tells you about the sum of protons and neutrons. So the right option is option A, number of neutrons plus protons. We have done this before, so we are doing this quickly. Question number 2, come on quickly. Okay, let's see what is the answer for question 2. In last class, we studied about two types of properties, a chemical property and a physical property. Chemical properties depends upon number of electrons. If any two particles have same number of electrons, it means they have same chemical properties. And physical properties depend over two things. One is the mass. If two particles have same mass as well as same charge, then they those particles have same physical properties. Whenever I'm using the word particle, it means it can be an atom as well as an ion. So the word particle is basically used collectively for, for both atom and an ion, right? So this question says, which statement about chlorine atoms and chloride ion is correct? A chloride ion is obviously formed from a chlorine atom. If you see the chlorine atom, a chlorine atom has 17 protons. Its atomic number is 17. An atom means it must have equal number of protons and electrons. If the protons 17, hai, to electrons be 17 honge if you are dealing with a chlorine atom. As chlorine is from group 7 of the periodic table and all group 7 elements, when they form an ion, they gain one electron and they get a charge of negative 1. So when a chloride ion is formed, its number of protons will stay same, but its number of electrons increases by 1. Because it gained one electron. So a chloride ion has one more electron as compared to a chlorine atom. Okay? Now we options. Ko hai. Options mein hai, they are both isotopes of chlorine. Eta, definition of isotope starts from the word atoms of the same element. An atom and an ion cannot be, of, cannot be isotopes of each other. 
ठीक है आइसोटोप की डेफिनेशन कहां से स्टार्ट होती है एटम्स ऑफ द सेम एलिमेंट हैविंग सेम नंबर ऑफ प्रोटॉन पर डिफरेंट नंबर ऑफ न्यूट्रॉन्स तो हमेशा दो एटम्स एक दूसरे के आइसोटोप हो सकते हैं एटम और आइन कभी भी एक दूसरे का आइसोटोप नहीं हो सकता राइट ओके सो दे आर बोथ आइसोटोप ऑफ क्लोरिन तो ये स्टेटमेंट रॉन्ग हो जाएगा सेकेंडली ऑप्शन बी इज दे अंडर गो द सेम केमिकल रिएक्शन केमिकल रिएक्शन इज अनदर वर्ड फॉर केमिकल प्रॉपर्टीज सो अ क्लोरिन एटम एंड अ क्लोराइड आइन कैन दे हैव सेम केमिकल रिएक्शन In order for any two particles to have same chemical reactions or same chemical properties, they must have same number of electrons. A chlorine atom has seventeen electrons and a chloride ion has eighteen electrons. If they have different number of electrons, it means they have different chemical properties or different chemical reactions. So they have different chemical reactions. किसी भी आइटम का अगर आइन बनेगा तो नंबर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स डिफरेंट होंगे और उनकी केमिकल प्रॉपर्टीज और केमिकल रिएक्शंस हमेशा डिफरेंट होंगे सेम नहीं हो सकते दैट्स व्हाई ऑप्शन बी इज आल्सो रॉन्ग नाउ ऑप्शन सी सेज दे हैव द सेम नंबर ऑफ प्रोटॉन्स इफ अ क्लोराइड आइन इज फॉर्म फ्रॉम अ क्लोरिन आइटम इट मीन्स इट इज फॉर्म बाई गेनिंग वन इलेक्ट्रॉन तो नंबर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स डिफरेंट होंगे बट नंबर ऑफ प्रोटोन्स विल स्टे सेम क्योंकि प्रोटॉन तो नहीं गेन कर रहा है ना उसने इलेक्ट्रॉन गेन कर रहा है सो दे हैव सेम नंबर ऑफ प्रोटॉन्स ऑप्शन सी इज करेक्ट एंड बाय ऑप्शन डी इज इन करेक्ट बट ऑलवेज रिमेंबर वेन एवर यू आर डूइंग पास पेपर क्वेश्चन स्पेशली वेन यू आर डूइंग एमसी क्यूज यू हैव टू चूज द राइट आंसर ओके दैट्स करेक्ट बट बाय द ऑप्शन इज रॉन्ग यू हैव टू एनालाइज इट जो ऑप्शन रॉन्ग है उसको भी आपने एनालाइज करना है कि वाई दैट इज रॉन्ग उसमें कोई एक बट आकर आप चेंज कर दो ना तो वो ऑप्शन भी करेक्ट बन सकता है इफ द ऑप्शन डी सेज दे हैव दी सेम फिजिकल प्रॉपर्टीज नाउ वी नो इफ टू पार्टिकल्स हैव डिफरेंट चार्जेस और डिफरेंट मासेस दे हैव डिफरेंट फिजिकल प्रॉपर्टीज अ क्लोरीन एटम हैज अ चार्ज ऑफ जीरो एंड अ क्लोराइड आइन हैज अ चार्ज ऑफ नेगेटिव वन सो अ क्लोरीन एटम एंड अ क्लोराइड आइन हैव डिफरेंट चार्जेस इट मीन्स दे मस्ट हैव डिफरेंट फिजिकल प्रॉपर्टीज But the option D says they have same physical property. So the word same makes this option incorrect. अगर यहाँ पे मैं same की जगह पे different physical properties लिख देता, तो ये वाला option भी तो सही हो जाता ना. कुछ questions में अगर आप आगे चलोगे तो हम कहते हैं ना कि question repeated होते हैं. Repeated कैसे होते हैं? इसी तरह से वो किसी option को different कर देता है. Same की जगह different रख देंगे, ये option correct हो जाएगा. Getting my point? तो आपने सारे options को बहुत क्लोजली पढ़ना है आप एग्जाम में बैठ के ये काम नहीं करोगे आप ये काम कब कर सकते हो वेल यू आर प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर द एग्जाम अभी आपके पास टाइम है अभी आप चारों ऑप्शंस को पढ़ेंगे और उसमें से जो सही है वो तो ठीक है जो गलत है वो वाई दिस इज रॉन्ग ये भी आपको एनालाइज करना है तो ऑप्शन डी इज इन करेक्ट बिकॉज एटम एंड आइन कैन नॉट हैव सेम फिजिकल प्रॉपर्टीज बिकॉज दे हैव डिफरेंट नंबर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन सो यू हैव टू चेक फॉर द नंबर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन ओके क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री आई थिंक वी ऑलरेडी डिड क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री आंसर बता दोगे जल्दी से इट फॉर्म्स एन आइन विथ टू नेगेटिव चार्जेस वन या इट इज नॉट इन ग्रुप एट द क्वेश्चन थ्री इज नॉट अ कंफ्यूजिंग क्वेश्चन इट्स अ स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड क्वेश्चन बट मोस्ट ऑफ द कैंडिडेट्स मोस्ट ऑफ द स्टूडेंट आंसर इट इन देखो बेटा क्वेश्चन कौन से पढ़ो वर्ड बाय वर्ड An atom of an element has eight electrons only. Nowhere he is saying that an atom has eight electrons in its valence shell. Last shell or outermost shell or valence shell ka word nahi hai yahan pe. An atom has total of eight electrons. So if you make the electronic configuration of this atom, if an atom has eight electrons, it means the first shell of that particular atom would have two electrons, and the second shell would have six electrons. So its valence shell would have six electrons. It means it must be from group six. समझाती है बात? इसने ये कहा है कि element atom of an element has eight electrons only. कहीं ये बोला हुआ है कि it has eight valence electrons or eight outermost shell electrons or eight electrons in the last shell. नहीं बोला हुआ. फिर भी हमें पता नहीं क्यों पढ़ते में लगता है कि last shell की बात कर रहा है. He is not talking about the last shell. He is talking about the total number of electrons. So the total number of electrons are eight. So if you make the electronic configuration, first shell has two electrons, and the second shell would have 
six electrons, which is the valence shell. It means this particular atom or this particular element must be from group six. If it is from group six, the option D says it is from group eight. So that is incorrect. अच्छा अभी हमने मेटल्स और नॉन मेटल्स को नहीं पढ़ा है लेकिन आई जस्ट टेल यू वन थिंग क्योंकि जब एग्जाम होता है तो सारे चैप्टर्स पढ़ के जाते हो ना ऑल दी एलिमेंट्स फ्रॉम ग्रुप वन टिल ग्रुप थ्री आर एक्चुअली कंसिडर्ड टू बी मेटल्स एंड ऑल दी एलिमेंट्स फ्रॉम ग्रुप फोर टिल ग्रुप एट ग्रुप फोर टिल ग्रुप एट आर कंसिडर्ड टू बी नॉन मेटल्स those who do not have any idea what what metal or non metals are it's okay aapko uski tension lene ki zarurat nahi but just remember the elements on the left hand side of the periodic table that is from group 1 till group 3 are considered to be metals and all the elements from group 4 till group 8 are considered to be non metals so this particular element is from group 6 how can i say it's from group 6 because its valence shell contains six electrons so it is not a metal it is a non metal that's why option c is incorrect it has full outer shell of electrons when outer shell is full when an atom has eight electron in its valence shell jab kisi atom ke valence shell mein eight electrons hote hain tab wo outer shell full kehlata hai iske do valence shell mein it has six electron so it has full outer shell of electron that is incorrect and option a says it forms an ion with two negative charges if an atom is from group 6 it gains two electron to complete its octet so it always gets a charge of two negative kyunki ye group 6 ka element hai isliye is pe charge kya hoga two negative hoga you guys remember all group 1 elements they get a charge of positive 1 all group elements they get a charge of positive 2 all group 3 elements they get a charge of positive 3 Group four elements do not lose or gain electrons. They do not form a cation or an anion. So we are not talking about group four right now in this chapter. All group five elements they gain three electrons and they get a charge of three negative. All group six elements they gain two electrons and they get a charge of two negative. Similarly, all group seven elements they gain one electron because they already have seven electrons in their valence shell and they get a charge of negative one. Right? Yad aa gaya hai sabko. So the right answer is A. ठीक है इकरा बेटा समझ आई बात आगे बढ़े चलो मूविंग ऑन क्वेश्चन टू यस क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर जस्ट टेल मी द आंसर फॉर क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर क्विक विच स्टेटमेंट अबाउट आइसोटोप्स ऑफ ब्रोमीन इज करेक्ट He is talking about the isotopes of bromine. It means he is talking about the atoms. Isotopes are the atoms of the same element having same number of protons. A bromine atom has two isotopes. You are not supposed to remember that, but let me tell you, a bromine atom, bromine element has two isotopes, and both of the isotopes must have same number of protons as well as same number of electrons. But their number of neutrons are different. So the answer is they are the atoms with the same number of protons, okay, and same chemical properties. Last class, we have written that isotopes of the same element always have same chemical properties but different physical properties. Okay, so option C is correct. They have same number of protons and same chemical properties. Why option A is incorrect? Because he is saying same number of electrons and a different number of protons. आइसोटोस की डेफिनेशन में यही है दे हैव सेम नंबर ऑफ प्रोटॉन्स इसलिए ऑप्शन ए इज इनकरेक्ट बी इज सेइंग द सेम नंबर ऑफ न्यूट्रॉन्स नंबर ऑफ न्यूट्रॉन्स ही तो डिफरेंट होते हैं एंड डी इज सेइंग दे हैव सेम नंबर ऑफ प्रोटॉन्स एंड सेम फिजिकल प्रॉपर्टीज आइसोटोप्स ऑफ द सेम एलिमेंट आई एम नॉट सेइंग कि यू जस्ट गोना गो कंपेयर द आइसोटोप्स ऑफ डिफरेंट एलिमेंट फॉर एग्जांपल इफ यू आर कंपेयरिंग वन आइसोटोप ऑफ ब्रोमीन एंड वन आइसोटोप ऑफ क्लोरीन तो इनकी भी केमिकल प्रॉपर्टीज सेम नहीं होंगी बिकॉज़ a bromine isotope have different number of electron as compared to chlorine isotope but if you are dealing with the isotopes of the same element it means they must have same protons as well as same electrons and if they have same number of electron they must have same chemical properties theek hai bhai sabko clear hai ye koi confusion hai to puch sakte ho please mere paas participants ke name nahi aa rahe aaj okay I cannot see your names for some reason. I don't know why. Shh. 
चलो सो व्हाट इज आइसोटोप्स आइसोटोप्स बच्चे हमने लास्ट क्लास में पढ़ा था ना आइसोटोप्स आर द एटम्स ऑफ द सेम एलिमेंट्स विद सेम नंबर ऑफ प्रोटॉन्स बट डिफरेंट नंबर ऑफ न्यूट्रॉन्स ठीक है इफ यू हैव मिस्ड दैट क्लास जस्ट स्टे फॉर अ वाइल आफ्टर द क्लास मैं आपको समझा दूंगा अभी जस्ट ट्राई टू कोप अप क्वेश्चन नंबर 6 का आंसर बता रहे हैं आप लोग मुझे द सिंबल फॉर टू आयंस आर शोन we have two types of ions a fluoride ion and a sodium ion they have given you the atomic number and the mass number or the nucleon number the smaller one is always the atomic number right if i ask you for this fluoride ion which is the atomic number the smaller number is always the atomic number actually in periodic table that is given in the exam the atomic number is written at the top of the symbol but here atomic number is written at the bottom of the symbol it doesn't matter fluorine has an atomic number of 9 it will always stay 9 it won't change If they have written at the bottom, so how would you identify which number is the atomic number? Always remember the smaller number is always the atomic number. So for the fluorine, this for fluoride ion, atomic number is nine. It means it has nine protons. What about its number of electrons? It has gained one electron because it has a charge of negative one. Negative one charge means it has gained one electron. So its number of electron is ten, and its number of neutron is. How do you find the number of neutron? You have to subtract the atomic number from the nucleon number. So nineteen minus nine is ten. Why I am finding the number of subatomic particles? Because if you read out the options, here is comparing the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons between these two ions. ये क्या कर रहा है? Number of protons, neutrons, or electrons को compare कर रहे हैं दोनों के आपस में. If you read the first option, he is saying the fluoride ion contains more electrons than the sodium ion. So we have to find the number of electrons in both of these ions. इसलिए मैंने कहा इलेक्ट्रॉन्स निकाल ले तो प्रोटॉन न्यूट्रॉन भी निकाल लेते हैं क्योंकि नेक्स्ट ऑप्शन में न्यूट्रॉन को कंपेयर करवाया हुआ है फॉर द सोडियम आइन वी कैन सी दैट अ सोडियम आइन हैज 11 प्रोटॉन्स बिकॉज़ इट्स एटॉमिक नंबर इज 11 इट्स नंबर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर आल्सो 10 बिकॉज़ इट्स एटॉमिक नंबर इज 11 बट एज इट इज अ चार्ज ऑफ पॉजिटिव वन इट मींस इट मस्ट हैव लॉस्ट वन इलेक्ट्रॉन सो द इलेक्ट्रॉन्स विद द सोडियम आइन इज 10 एंड व्हाट अबाउट इट्स नंबर ऑफ न्यूट्रॉन्स हाउ डू यू फाइंड नंबर ऑफ न्यूट्रॉन्स nucleon number minus atomic number 21 minus 11 that would give you again 10 so now tell me the answer awaaz nahi aa rahi hai can you all hear me properly zainab ke paas awaaz nahi aa rahi can you help out zainab bachcho aap logo ke paas aa rahi hai awaaz जैना बेटा सबके पास आ रही है आवाज यू हैव टू चेक समथिंग एट योर एंड ओके द फ्लोराइड एंड कंटेन्स अच्छा अच्छा जैनब कह रही है आवाज नहीं आ रही और मैं उसको कह रहा हूं कि आपके पास आ रही होगी आई हैव टू राइट इट इन द चैट ने हाउस टू पिट साहब Okay, the fluoride ion contains more electrons than sodium ion. This is incorrect because the fluoride ion and sodium ion have equal number of electrons. That is ten electrons. Okay. Option B is the sodium ion contains more neutrons than fluoride ion. Both of these ions have same number of neutrons. So option B is also incorrect. The two ions contain the same number of electrons as each other. This is correct. Both of these ions has ten electrons. So uh, the option C is correct. Okay, ji. Question number seven. Ah, uh, question number seven. I am leaving you as your homework. I am not doing this. You will do it yourself. MCQ five is confusing. MCQ five basically, son, you have to do it. Your homework will be sheet. Most probably, it will not be MCQ five. Actually, this belongs from some other chapter, organic chemistry. This was done by mistake. It was done here. And it was done when? When did it get done? तो आई थिंक मैंने अभी आप लोगों की वर्कशीट जो अपलोड की है उसमें से हटा दिया होगा बट इफ यू हैव ओल्ड वर्कशीट्स फ्रॉम लास्ट सेशन तो आपने ये एमसीक्यू फाइव नहीं करना है अभी आई नो इट्स कंफ्यूजिंग बिकॉज यू हैवेंट स्टडीड अबाउट इट एंड यू विल स्टडी अबाउट इट इन ऑर्गेनिक केमिस्ट्री ठीक है जी क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवन इज योर होमवर्क क्वेश्चन नंबर एट अगेन इज योर होमवर्क क्योंकि क्वेश्चन नंबर एट हमने uh, पहले भी ट्राई किया हुआ है इट्स वेरी इजी क्वेश्चन नंबर नाइन क्वेश्चन नंबर नाइन से The metals chromium, cobalt, iron, and manganese. Actually, I have uh, know the, I know the symbols. 
कि कौन से एलिमेंट्स का सिंबल है बट यू नॉट सपोज टू रिमेम्बर डेट यू शुड है I'm telling you, this is chromium, cobalt, iron, and manganese are all transition elements. Which particles have the same number of electrons? And so you have to compare the number of electrons of the two elements or the two particles that are given in the same option. See, K G. And how would you do that? You have to see the periodic table. If you see the cobalt, you have to find the atomic number of these particular element because from the atomic number you can find the number of electrons. कर लोगे ये क्वेश्चन लेट मी सॉल्व ऑप्शन ए फॉर यू कोबोल्ड कोबोल्ड हैज एन एटॉमिक नंबर ऑफ 27 बट ऑलवेज रिमेंबर इन दिस प्रोडक्ट टेबल दैट विल बी गिवन इन योर एग्जाम द एटॉमिक नंबर्स आर रिटन एट द टॉप ऑफ द सिंबल सो कोबोल्ड हैज एन एटॉमिक नंबर ऑफ 27 क्रोमियम हैज एन एटॉमिक नंबर ऑफ 24 राइट सो इफ यू सी द क्वेश्चन 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 So cobalt has an atomic number of twenty-seven, and chromium has an atomic number of twenty-four. Chromium is it in its atomic state? Chromium ion नहीं है. मतलब chromium के पास जितने protons हैं उतने ही electrons भी होंगे. But cobalt is in the ionic form. It means it has lost two electron, two positive charge है ना. तो इसके पास जो number of protons हैं वो तो 27 है बट नंबर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स के लिए यू हैव टू सब्ट्रैक्ट टू फ्रॉम दिस 27 तो इट यू गेट 25 सो डू दे हैव सेम नंबर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन कोबाल्ट टू पॉजिटिव आयन के पास 25 इलेक्ट्रॉन्स है और क्रोमियम एटम के पास 24 इलेक्ट्रॉन्स है ये बात समझ आई है आप लोगों को कैसे करना है लेट्स कंपेयर ऑप्शन डी ऑप्शन डी देखते हैं जरा इफ यू सी फ्रॉम द प्रोडिक टेबल एफ ई आयरन हैज एन एटॉमिक नंबर ऑफ 26 इट मींस एन आयरन एटम हैज 26 electrons. If you are dealing with an iron atom, it has 26 electron. But right now you have iron three positive one. It means it has lost three electron. So the number of electrons to this iron ion has 26 minus three that is 23. So it has 23 electrons right now. And this manganese ion, Mn is the symbol for manganese. If you see from the periodic table. मैंगनीज एज एन एटोमिक नंबर ऑफ ट्वेंटी फाइव ठीक है ये प्रोडिक टेबल से देख के बताना है ये मुझे याद मुझे याद है आपको याद करने नहीं ठीक है यू हैव टू यूज द प्रोडिक टेबल फॉर दिस लेट मी शो यू हेयर मैगनीज हैज एन एटोमिक नंबर ऑफ ट्वेंटी फाइव एंड आयरन हैज एन एटोमिक नंबर ऑफ ट्वेंटी सिक्स इट मीन्स अ मैग्नीजियम एटम हैज सॉरी मैगनीज एटम हैज ट्वेंटी फाइव इलेक्ट्रॉन्स एंड एन आयरन एटम हैज ट्वेंटी सिक्स इलेक्ट्रॉन्स तो इनके एटम्स के पास तो नंबर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन डिफरेंट है बट एक उसमें से आइन बना हुआ है और एक जो है दूसरा भी आइन बना हुआ है तो आइन के हिसाब से आपको इनके नंबर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स बताना है सो मैंगनीस आइन हैज मैंगनीस Atom has 25 electron, but when you are dealing with Mn2 positive ion, it means it must have lost two electrons. So, if we say minus two, कर दो तो कितने electron बन जाएंगे? 23 electrons. So, both of these ions have same number of electrons. So, this is the option. इसी तरह आप अगर आप A, B, C, D में सबके निकाल निकाल के देखोगे तो same नहीं आ रहे थे, सिर्फ option D में same आ रहा है. ठीक है? तो बाकी options आपने homework में इसके try करने हैं और निकाल के देखना है, right? अभी भी अगर कोई कंफ्यूजन है किसी को तो आप लोग पूछ सकते हो वेयर कैन यू फाइंड दिस वर्कशीट मरियम बेटा आपके पोर्टल पे अपलोडेड है इफ दे आर स्टिल नॉट देयर तो आई विल रिमाइंड देम कि आज अपलोड हो जाएंगे वैसे तो अपलोडेड है क्वेश्चन नंबर टेन क्वेश्चन नंबर टेन आप लोग होमवर्क uh, में करो सब मैं करवा दूंगा तो भी प्रैक्टिस के लिए नहीं बचेंगे ना तो डू इट एज योर होमवर्क क्वेश्चन नंबर टेन क्वेश्चन नंबर इलेवन इफ यू रिकॉल वी स्टडीड अबाउट द स्टेबिलिटी ऑफ एटम्स एंड एटम्स इन ऑर्डर टू गेट स्टेबल दे हैव टू कंप्लीट देयर ऑप्टेड राइट सो व्हेन दे हैव टू कंप्लीट देयर ऑप्टेड दे आई दर लूज इलेक्ट्रॉन और सम एटम्स ऑफ डिफरेंट एलिमेंट लाइक ग्रुप फाइव ग्रुप सिक्स ग्रुप सेवन एलिमेंट द गेन इलेक्ट्रॉन ऐसा ही होता है ना 
अच्छा अब वेन एवर एन एटम लूज और गेन इलेक्ट्रॉन वी से दैट इट रिएक्ट so in this question he is saying the diagram shows the arrangement of electrons in the atoms of four different elements which is the least reactive of the four elements theek hai acha ab now we have studied that group 8 elements jo group 8 ke elements hote hain they are unreactive they do not react because they do not have to react as they have a complete outer most shell already If we see helium from group eight, it has two electron. It already follows the duplet rule. It does not have to lose or gain electron. Similarly, if we go down the group eight, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, they all have eight valence electrons. It means they do not have to lose or gain electron. They are already stable. However, we cannot call them that they are unreactive. We call them they are least reactive. any atom that have a complete outer most shell is considered to be least reactive in chemistry we can never say that an atom will never react if you provide certain conditions to the atom of helium neon and argon by conditions i mean ke uska temperature itna zyada kar do itna zyada kar do ke usko majburan react hona pad jaye uske electrons nikal jaye valence shell se so they do react so always remember group 8 elements we call them noble gases they have a complete outer most shell of electrons and they are least reactive never call them unreactive you will always have to call them least reactive so which atom has is least reactive here which have a complete outer most shell a complete outer most shell kab hota hai jab first shell mein two electrons ho means atom that are following the duplet rule aur usme hamare paas hydrogen helium lithium beryllium hota hai or otherwise complete outer most shell is that where an atom has a complete eight electrons in their valence shell so in may say eight electrons kiske valence shell mein hai atom in option b so option b is correct theek hai bhai kya baat kari humne group 8 ke elements ko aap kya kahoge least reactive you won't call them unreactive humne unko unreactive nahi kehna hai balki humne unko kya kehna hai least reactive kehna hai क्लियर है आगे बढ़े किसी का कोई क्वेश्चन साथ साथ बेटा प्रीवियस क्लासेस यू कैन कवर फ्रॉम द रिकॉर्डेड लेक्चर्स डू लीव मी अ मैसेज आई विल गाइड यू हाउ टू एक्सेस द लेक्चर्स विच चैप्टर गोन डू आफ्टर दिस जरवा वी विल स्टार्ट एलिमेंट मिक्सचर एंड कंपाउंड ठीक है वेयर वील गो into the formula making in detail chalo bhai question number 12 leaving as your homework question number 13 yes question number 13 thoda sa lengthy question hai uh, mostly students asaan hai very easy but mostly students uh, isme thodi si gadbad kar dete hain gadbad nahi karni hai bilkul bhi bahut dhyan se dekho acha ab question ka beta ek fashion hai ek style hai question ka abhi kyunki aap pehle chapter ke past papers kar rahe ho so with the passage of time you will get used to of this fashion while well, when you start doing past papers or different chapters to ek bar is fashion ko absorb kar loge to usi style pe question bante hain jaise ab ye table bana hua hai isko dekh ke ghabrane ki zarurat nahi hai ki yaar kis kabhi kuch de deta hai kabhi kisi tarah ka table bana deta hai isi tarah ke table aate rahenge jab when you are done with 50 60 mcqs you will realize ki it is following the same trend same pattern same style of the questions so aap used to ho jao In this question, he is saying the table contains information on the structure of four particles. Okay, the word particles you guys already know the particles can be an atom as well as an ion. Now we have given the four particles. One is the magnesium atom. The first particle is atom because it has no charge. It means it has zero charge. And why it is an atom? Because it must have equal number of protons as well as equal number of electrons. Okay. in first row they have hidden you the number of neutrons in this particular particle and you you guys already know how can you find the number of neutrons you can find the number of neutrons by subtracting the atomic number from the nucleon number it means you have to go to the product table but here in this question there is no need to use the product table because if you see in the second row they have given you the ion of this particular atom magnesium atom hai upar usi ka niche magnesium ion hai whenever an atom loses or gain electron it forms an ion the number of electrons kam zyada hote hai na number of neutrons will stay same so a magnesium atom and a magnesium ion will have equal number of neutrons 
So if the area is given you the number of neutrons in a magnesium mine, it means the number of neutrons in a magnesium atom would also be same. It will be 12. Hoga. The value of W should be 12. Right? You are actually have to find the values of W, X, Y, and Z. W was given in the first row. Now if you see the second row, in second row you have magnesium ion, Mg2 positive ion. Its proton number is given which is 12, which tells you about the number of protons. Obviously, when an atom forms an ion, its number of protons stays same. Number of protons to change nahi hota na. Number of neutrons be given at 12. But it is asking you about the number of electrons. Ab batao kitne number of electrons honge? Two positive charge. Hai. Positive means it must have lost two electrons. So if a magnesium atom had 12 electrons, a magnesium 2 positive ion would have 10 electrons. You can lose ki hai na two electrons. So 12 se kitne rahe hai? 10 electrons. Okay. So the value of X is 10. Value of W is 12. Now, if you move on to the third row, there you can find the Y as unknown. The second last particle is your fluorine atom and the last particle is your fluoride ion. So when an, whenever an atom forms an ion, its number of protons stays same. So atomic number be same hoga. Jo fluoride ion ke num, proton number hai, wohi fluorine atom ki bhi hoga. The value of Y should be 9. Right? So we know the value of W, we know the value of X, we know the value of Y. Right? Now for the value of Z that is given in the final row, he is asking you about the number of electrons in this F negative ion. So this has a charge of negative 1. Say negative lagaya when it means by default is negative 1. So it has 9 protons. So whenever any atom gets a negative 1 charge, it means it must have gained 1 electron. So the number of electrons should be equals to 10. Z ki value ho jayegi 10. So now you know the value of x, w, x, y and z. Okay, choose the correct option. 12, w is 12, x is 10. Y is 9 and Z is 10. So the right answer should be B. Okay, both by repeat why a question. Same values ke saath. Okay, bhai, aage bade. Do question 14 as your homework. Leave question 15 for now. Don't do question 15. Question 16 is a very good question. Homework mein karoge aap log and uh, then we'll discuss in the coming class agar aap se nahi why a question. Okay, question number 24. Karna hai abhi ya homework ke liye chhoda hai? Because it's a very nice question. And uh, this is a very repeated question as well. Ye kabhi change nahi hota question. Iska answer bhi change nahi hota. Ji Uruba beta, uh, monthly test hote hai. We are about to, we are actually done with this chapter. So coming week, uh, we'll be conducting a test for this chapter. Theek hai? Okay, you want this question? You want me to do this question? Chalo. This question may thoda sa time lagega, but it's a very interesting question. Ye question na, question hi change nahi hota. Na hi iska answer change ho sakta hai. Ye question na chalata hai. O level may be, IGCSE may be. In fact, exact question jo hai na, wo A level may be utha ke deta hai. Yes, beta, these questions are available on your portals. Yes, beta, uh, Zarwa, this question we have put in the story. Pe bhi tha apni. I think uh, yesterday or day before yesterday. And I also put the solution of it. Okay? It's a very nice question. Chalo, answer bata rahe ho. Stories pe ek question lagte hai. Aaj bhi, I think, lagye ho honge ek do. ठीक है वो भी देख लिया करो इससे होगा ये कि आपकी चलते फिरते ना तैयारी होती रहेगी थोड़ी बहुत चलो भाई दिस क्वेश्चन सेज व्हिच ग्राफ शोस द नंबर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स इन द आउटर शेल ऑफ एन एटम प्लॉटेड अगेंस्ट द टाइम प्लॉटेड सॉरी नॉट टाइम वी आर नॉट मेकिंग अ फिजिक्स ग्राफ आई इज सेइंग द नंबर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स इन द आउटर शेल ऑफ एन एटम प्लॉटेड अगेंस्ट द एटॉमिक नंबर ऑफ द फर्स्ट 10 एलिमेंट्स इन द प्रोडक्ट टेबल See, bache, whenever you have to draw a graph, uh, you need a y coordinate and an x coordinate, right? Aisa hi hota hai na? Whenever you have to draw a graph, you need an x coordinate and a y coordinate. 
एक कोऑर्डिनेट चाहिए होता है जिसमें एक्स की वैल्यू होती है और वाई की वैल्यू होती है ठीक है भाई नाउ ही सेइंग यू हैव टू यूज प्रोटॉन नंबर ऑन द एक्स एक्सिस एंड नंबर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स इन द आउटर शेल ऑन वाई एक्सिस नंबर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स इन द आउटर शेल इज बेसिकली दैलेंस इलेक्ट्रॉन्स राइट फॉर द फर्स्ट टेन एलिमेंट ऑफ द प्रोडक्ट टेबल वॉट आर द फर्स्ट टेन एलिमेंट ऑफ द प्रोडक्ट टेबल इफ यू स्टार्ट फ्रॉम हाइड्रोजन Hydrogen has an atomic number of one. It is the first element of the product table. Its electronic configuration is one. So if you make the coordinate for hydrogen, its proton number is how much? Its proton number is one, and its number of valence electrons or outer shell electrons is also one. मतलब x की जगह पे आएगा atomic number, right? Proton number. Y coordination की जगह पे आएगा number of electrons in the outer shell. If you see the second element of the product table, that is helium, its electronic configuration is two, its atomic number is two, and the number of electron in its valence shell is also two. If you see lithium, lithium has an atomic number of three. If you make the electronic configuration of lithium, this is two comma one. So for uh, x coordinate, kya hoga? Its atomic number, which is three, and the y coordinate should be the number of its valence electron, which is one. So the coordinate becomes three comma one because we have to plot a graph. We need x axis and y axis values. It doesn't hydrogen has two atoms in the outer shell? No, hydrogen has only one electron in its outer shell because hydrogen atom has only one electron because its atomic number is one. See the product table. Us me dik jayega. Beryllium. The next element is beryllium. Its electronic configuration is two comma two. So its coordinate kya hoga? Atomic number hai iska four and the number of valence electrons are two. देखो नंबर ऑफ वैलेंस इलेक्ट्रॉन्स है टू और अटोमिक नंबर है फोर तो अटोमिक नंबर या प्रोटॉन नंबर एक्स एक्सिस की जगह पे आना है और वैलेंस इलेक्ट्रॉन्स वाई एक्सिस की जगह पे आना है आफ्टर बेरिलियम वी हैव बोरॉन इट्स अटोमिक नंबर इज फाइव इलेक्ट्रॉनिक कॉन्फिग्रेशन इज टू कॉमा थ्री एंड इट्स कॉर्डिनेट वुड बिकम फाइव कॉमा थ्री आफ्टर बोरॉन वी हैव कार्बन अटोमिक नंबर इज सिक्स इलेक्ट्रॉनिक कॉन्फिग्रेशन इज टू कॉमा फोर सिक्स कॉमा फोर राइट देन वी हैव नाइट्रोजन So electronic configuration is two comma five. Its coordinate would become seven comma five because seven is the atomic number, proton number, which is x-axis pe aane, and five is the number of valence electrons. Yes, but a hydrogen does not gain or lose electron. It uh, does another phenomena which is known as sharing of electron. Sometimes hydrogen loses electron, sometimes it shares electron. जो हम bonding में detail में पढ़ेंगे. Helium does not gain or lose electron. Because it already is following the duplet rule. अच्छा अभी यहाँ तक बात समझ आई. Then we have oxygen. Its electronic configuration is two comma six. Its atomic number is eight, and the number of outer shell electron is six. So the coordinate becomes eight comma six. Now, if you see the next element, which is after oxygen, we have fluorine. Its electronic configuration is two comma seven. So, its coordinate will be what? Atomic number, proton number is nine, and the number of outer shell electron is seven, nine comma seven. If you start plotting these values on the graph, how it happens? Zero. So, the graph is like this. You are not supposed to do all of this thing in the exam. Exam for this, so this pattern. Now, remember this pattern. The same will remain. Does not change. Okay. I just want to tell you that this pattern is where it comes from. On y-axis, you have to use the proton numbers. Let's say nine. The call let them. And on x-axis, you have to plot number of valence electrons. So the first coordinate is for hydrogen, which is one comma one. Second is for helium, two comma two. Third is for lithium, which is three comma one. Then we have for beryllium, which is four comma two. Then boron, which is five comma three. Carbon, which is six comma four, then we have nitrogen, which is seven comma five. If you see the trend, the line will go upwards from hydrogen to helium, then it comes downward for lithium, and then it moves back upward. Right? So the, this trend will always stay same. Why? Reason is because the periodic table won't change. Their atomic number won't change. Their number of valence electrons won't change. So this trend will always stay same. 
So whenever he asked you to find the trend between the proton number and number of electrons in the outer shell of the first 10 elements of the product table, the graph would always look like this. It will go upward from hydrogen to helium after proton number two. Then for, for lithium, it will come downward and then it will move back again. Right? Yaad ho jayega ye trend aap logo ko? Ikra, Zahra, Kiswa, Disha, Usman, Baniya. Yes, this uh, Anik, of course, uh, you should be able to comprehend this without making these coordinates. Okay, if uh, Anik is saying, uh, if for example, an element has a proton number two, will have two electron in its outer shell, that's for obvious. But you should be able to do it mentally. Okay, the element which have as a proton number two will have two electron in its outer shell. The element with proton number four will have two electron in its first shell and uh, two electron in its outer shell. The element with six proton number will have two electron in its first shell and four electron in its outer shell. Of course, that's what I'm saying. Ye toh main ke dikha Thikhe? Toh aap bhi apni note taking ye si tarah se kar loge. Lekin in exam, you're not supposed to make these coordinates. You just have to learn this trend. It will always stay safe. Ek bar practice ho gaya, aapko pata lag gaya ki ye graph yun ja ke niche kyun aaya, phir upar kyun gaya. Now you never have to make these coordinates again. You will always remember the trend now. Ikra, uh, uh, you just leave a message on the group. If you are not part of any group, I think you should be on the some group. Na, jis pe link aaya hai. So just find my number from that group and just send me a message. I will tell you or guide you through the procedure how to access the recorded lectures. Okay, let's see some of the questions from uh, theory paper. A question is very interesting. Achha, is worksheets mein baaki jitne bhi questions honge, wo aapko homework pe karna hai. Ye ek hamara rule hota hai, dekho. We are gonna do some of the questions in the classroom. Some of the questions you'll do as your homework. Okay. Uh, in fact, all of the remaining questions you have to do as your homework. Then what will happen? Obviously, it won't happen that you'll get all the questions. Some will come, some will not come. So, if you don't come, you'll ask them. Now, ask them in which way. Look, you can ask them this way. Either, for example, if you cannot wait for the class, you can WhatsApp. Okay, when we go to WhatsApp, when we go to WhatsApp, when we go to WhatsApp, uh, we will start a query support program. This pe aap group pe mere saath bhi mere associate teachers honge jo ke timely aapko har cheez ka reply kar rahe honge. Main bhi aapko reply kar raha honga. To humne ye kaam ek karenge ke jaise hi homework milega hum homework karenge aapko jo bhi problem hogi aap mitse puchhoge uska aapko solution mil jayega ya main aapko guide kar dunga ke kaise problem hogi. Kuch questions hote hain jo ke aapko nahi samajh aa rahe honge message ke through ya email ke through to aap kya karoge uh, you will wait for the class and before class or at the end of a class you will tell me ki ye questions are bahut mushkil tha nahi ho raha isko abhi karwa de class mein to hum kuch questions wahan pe karenge questions puchne zarur hai dekho agar koi kehta hai ki mujhe kuch nahi puchna mujhe sab kuch samajh aa gaya to aisa nahi hota ki aapko sab kuch samajh aa jaye kahin na kahin kuch na kuch questions zarur phaste hain Amna beta, uh, Google Classroom nahi hai. We have a portal system, na? To portal pe hi aapko sari cheeze milengi. Classroom ki need nahi hai hume aap. Classroom is outdated. Thik hai, Amna, kuch problem ho, to mujhe message kar de na. I, mai guide kar dunga aapko. Chalein bhai, chali paper dekhein. Chalo. Question number six says, the table shows some information about six particles. Complete the table. Okay. See here, he has written the word particle. Particle means if it can be an atom as well as an ion, right? So in the first row, he has given you the symbol of one element. Basically, this is a chlorine element. If you do not, uh, obviously, I'm not expecting you that you have symbols of all elements. You have to keep the product table in front of you. 
So its mass number is given, which is 35. How can I say this is the mass number? Because uh, if you see in the second column, they have already given you the atomic number. If atomic number is 17, it means the other number written should be a mass number. Now number of neutrons given, which is 18. Uh, you can also recheck this number of neutrons by subtracting 17 minus 35. Now he's just asking you the number of electrons in the particle. This particular particle is the atom because it does not have any charge. If it does not have any charge, it means it has equal number of protons and electrons. So the, its number of electrons should always be, should also be 17, right? Now for the second row, in second row, they have given you the proton number. They have given you the number of neutrons and number of electrons, but they have not given you the symbol for this particular. How would you identify any element? You identify an element from its atomic number because atomic number or the proton number is the identification of an element. You have to go to the periodic table. You have to find which element has an atomic number of 17. But here in this question, you do not have to use the periodic table because if you see the first row, in the first row, we had a chlorine atom. This atomic number 17 tha. Ye bhi 17 hai. obviously is dealing with the chlorine. The chlorine hai. Right? Now, what about its mass number? In order to find the nucleon number or mass number, now we know that any particular element can have two or more than two isotopes. We cannot say if it is a chlorine, its atomic number must be 35. No. We have to check for the nucleon number. Atomic number will stay 17. We know it won't change. But nucleon number can change. Because isotopes of the same element can have different number of neutrons. So how would you confirm its number of neutrons? It is already given if you see the first set, third column. The number of neutrons are 20. Number of protons are 17. So what should be its nucleon number? It should be 17 plus 20. So 17 plus 20 would be 37. It means these two particles are isotopes of chlorine. And does it have any charge? How would you decide for its charge? If you see its number of protons and number of electrons, they are all 17, 17. It means it does not have any charge. Ye bhi ek atom hai. Right? Chalo. Third row, mein, uh, you have to find the number of neutrons for this particle of potassium. K is the symbol for potassium. Its proton number is 19. Its number of electrons are 18 because it has lost one electron. What about its number of neutron? How do you find number of neutron? Atomic number minus nucleon number. Nucleon number is given which is 39 minus 19. So its number of neutrons are 20. Now 39 nucleon number. Hai. Obviously atomic number given hai. Uske saath ek aur number likha hua hai symbol ke saath. Toh wo nucleon number hi hoga na. Or toh kuch bada hi nahi hai na. Nucleon number hai atomic number hai. Atomic number saamne hai toh. Wo dousa nucleon number hoga. Chalo bhai. Fourth row mein. We have a bromine particle. This Br is the symbol for bromine. It has a charge of negative 1. You have to find its atomic number. It's very simple. You can go to the periodic table. You can find this symbol Br and you can find its atomic number because atomic number never changes. Or instead of going to the periodic table, if you see the row below it, again the symbol is same. It means these two are for the same element. So atomic number does not change. It's ka niche wale mein 35 likha hai, to upper wale bhi same element hai na, bas uska ion bana hai. To jab ion banta hai atom se, to atomic number to change nahi hota na, atomic number to 35 hi rahega. To upper kya a jayega? 35. Ye baat samaj aayye, agar kisi ko koi confusion hai, to please push lo. Rukna nahi. Mere paas na uh, list of participants nahi aa raha hai, ash pata nahi kyun blank hai. So I cannot call your names. Isliye sabko awaaz to aari hai. To please, kisi ko abhi bhi ye kuch unclear hai to push lena beta. How do I refresh Zoom? It uh, will drop the meeting. But I'm just asking ke yahan tak sabko clear hai. Kisi ko koi problem hai to please mujhe bata do taake mai repeat kara do. All clear? Okay. My Y stuck in between. Zara, is it happening for the whole class? No. Okay. It's happening with Zara. Achha. 
पहले होता था ये प्रॉब्लम बट आई चेंज दी कनेक्शन इंटरनेट कनेक्शन चेंज हुआ है तो अब स्मूथ है सब कुछ आई वुड रिकमेंड कि आप लोग भी वो जो स्ट्रॉन्ग uh, फाइबर वाला होता है ना वो अच्छा चलता है बट कुछ एरियाज में वो भी गड़बड़ करता है अच्छा जी फॉर द सेकेंड लास्ट रो यू हैव टू फाइंड दी नंबर ऑफ न्यूट्रॉन्स This is br. Its mass number is given, which is eighty-one. Proton number is thirty-five. So, how do you find the number of neutrons? Mass number or the nucleon number, which is eighty-one. Atomic number, which is thirty-five. कितना बन रहा है ये? Forty-six, right? Now, for the last row, मुझे इसका आंसर आप लोग बताओ. You have to write this. You have to identify an element. This particular element is not given anywhere in the uh, table in the above rows. It means you have to use the product table. So go to the product table, find which element has an atomic number of thirty-seven. You want me to show the product table? चलो मैं दिखा देता हूँ product table. Here, thirty-seven atomic number is of rubidium element. The symbol is R B. Right? Okay. This is R B. Now, if you see all the particles that are already given, they have written you the symbols of that element. They have given you the nucleon number or the mass number of these elements, and they have given you the charges. If any particle is an in an ionic form, they have given you the charges. So, how would you find the nucleon number of rubidium? अब कुछ स्टूडेंट्स क्या करते हैं वो कहते हैं प्रोडिक टेबल में न्यूक्लियन नंबर तो होता है वहां से देख के लिख देते हैं वहां से देख के आपको नहीं लिखना है क्योंकि हमने लास्ट क्लास में रिलेटिव अबेंडेंस निकालना सीखा था वो तो एवरेज होता है ठीक है न्यूक्लियन नंबर आप इस टेबल की इंफॉर्मेशन से निकालोगे ही हैज गिवन यू द प्रोटॉन्स एज वेल एज न्यूट्रॉन्स सो यू हैव टू ऐड नंबर ऑफ प्रोटॉन्स एंड नंबर ऑफ न्यूट्रॉन्स 37 प्लस 48 इट विल गिव यू 85 इट मींस दिस पर्टिकुलर आइसोटोप ऑफ रुबिडियम as a nucleon number or mass number of 85 right periodic table se dekh ke nucleon number nahi likhna you have to find the nucleon number from this information given in the table because rubidium atom or rubidium element can also have different isotopes so kya periodic table mein wo average hota hai of all the isotopes now what about its charge does it have any charge agar aap iske number of protons dekho aur number of electrons dekho are they equal no it has one lesser electron as compared to protons it means it must have lost one electron 36 electrons and a protons 37 and had it been rubidium atom it must have 37 electron but right now the number of electrons are 36 it means it must have lost one electron so uh, this must have a charge of positive 1 so you have to write the charge positive If you are not writing one with it, if you are just writing a positive sign, it's mean by default it is positive. ठीक है positive लिख के छोड़ दो या one अगर लिख भी दोगे तो कोई issue नहीं. If you forget to write this charge, you won't get this mark. देखो this table is for six marks. For every blank you are getting one mark. So if you have written the symbol correctly, the nucleon number as well as the charge, then only you will get one mark. For example, if you say I have written the symbol correctly, I have given them the nucleon number, but I forgot to write the charge. So you cannot fight with the examiner that he should give you at least point five marks for all this effort. No, there is no concept of point five in Cambridge. Either you are getting a zero mark or you are getting a one mark. Okay, boy. All clear so far, so good. Anything you guys need to ask, or anything you guys need to discuss, or any suggestions about the class, or for the upcoming chapter. कुछ भी है कोई बात करनी है फील फ्री टू टॉक टू मी आई एम हियर एंड वी आर डन विद टूडेज लेक्चर ठीक है दिस वर्कशीट्स आर अपलोडेड ऑन योर पोर्टल्स इफ दे आर नॉट ऑलरेडी अपलोडेड प्लीज डू चेक एंड लेट मी नो आई विल आस्क दी बट रिस्पेक्टिव एडमिन्स टू डू इट एस एफ एंड ऑल द क्वेश्चन डेट आर गिवेन इन दिस वर्कशीट यू विल हैव वर्कशीट्स ऑफ एम सी क्यूज एंड थ्योरीज यू हैव टू डू ऑल द क्वेश्चन दे आर बाय डिफॉल्ट योर होमवर्क we will do some of the questions uh, in the class as well 
कुछ और क्वेश्चन हम क्लास में करेंगे देन आई विल गिव यू अ वीक टू प्रिपेयर दिस टॉपिक देन वी विल कंडक्ट अ मंथली असेसमेंट फॉर दिस पर्टिकुलर टॉपिक Meanwhile, in coming class, we will move on to the next topic. And if you have queries related to these questions given in your worksheets, uh, we'll be doing in the coming class. Again, feel free to ask me any question on WhatsApp related to these worksheets. Okay, Aliza. Next chapter we're gonna start is element mixture and compounds. It does not have any past papers. This is all theoretical paper. uh actually before moving on to the chemical bonding we have to practice formula making of any compounds in detail okay so the next topic would be easier we have to uh, just learn the formula making of any compounds in detail that's it but if you want to move on to the other topics uh, if you want to pre read the topics you can move on to the chapter chemical bonding when will i conduct the test after uh, next week matlab next week we will going to conduct the test it will be announced properly don't worry about it but you should start preparing for this chapter first complete your homework ask your queries when you are completely satisfied with the questions then we will announce the test otherwise if you guys feel that you need to do some more questions with me or you have a lot of queries we will conduct an extra session for you guys usme hum log sab cheeze solve karenge then we will announce the test theek hai bilkul pakki taiyari karo fir test pe jayenge how many chapters can be finished till october but by the end of october i think we going to be done with more than half of the topics okay uh, are you worried about your midterm ramin 